As a kid, you probably remember Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday, and you remember the joy. Maybe you had the little palm fronds. Perhaps you had a whole branch that you'd wave. Maybe the kids would walk in waving them. Perhaps it was just talked about during the service. But you remember the celebration that King Jesus, the one foretold by Zechariah, finally enters into his kingdom to rule and to reign, and everyone celebrates, yay, Jesus is here, until they crucified him. But Jesus showed up, and his kids, we, we remember the, the celebration, the, the, the procession, people laying down the cloaks and the branches for the king to come in. And yet it's so painful when we realize that the proclamation that he is king is as it's nailed on a board over his head on the cross. That even then, the Jewish people said, we have no king but Caesar. Even then they say, no, just say he said he was king, not that he actually was king. He's not our king. We don't know him. It's all the more painful when you, when you study the Old Testament and you're looking at the establishment of Saul and David and all the kings following. That God himself told Samuel when the people said, we want a king, we want to be like everyone else. Which as soon as we say we want to be like everyone else, we know that it's not going down a good path. But as soon as everyone said, we want to be like everyone else, God told Samuel, don't worry, they're not rejecting you. They've rejected me as their king. And so God told him, warn them what they're going to get. It's not going to be good. And sure enough, we see all the problems that come along as the kings come. But then, after all these centuries, after all these kings and all the, the wickedness, the falling of Israel and the falling of Judah and the return from those places and all the things that happened in the intertestamental period, well, then the king comes. The king is born. Salvation is there for the people. And what happens? Amidst the celebration, there's plotting. There is preparation to put him to death through a kangaroo court. And we realize the extent of God's love that even with that, he came for the joy set before him, our salvation. That God said they rejected not you, Samuel, but me as their king. And then Jesus is God in the flesh. God who comes to be the king rides into his capital city, the, the city on a hill, the light, the place of Zion, God's dwelling place amongst the people. And as he goes in and the people celebrate, they ultimately reject him again. Lord, forgive us for all the times we do that. We say, Jesus is Lord of my life. You're my king. And then something comes along and we say, well, Jesus who? I live in this world. But no, we, we live in this world, but not of this world. Jesus is our king. He is our Lord. He is our savior. Not just the one who, who rescues us from a burning building or something. And then we go our separate ways. No, he is the king who comes in and conquers. He is the king who comes in and takes us out of slavery and brings us into his own kingdom. So we now listen to him. He is our king. And we give thanks to God that his exaltation is upon a cross for our salvation. That through his death and resurrection, he now gives us not only forgiveness of our sins, but hope in life everlasting. As we will be raised as he is raised in the resurrection. God be praised. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.